Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. How are you doing? Many of you will probably be finishing school for the holidays. Ooh, that's exciting. I hope you're being super kind to those grown-ups who have lots to do before Christmas. Maybe you could give them a little bit of space and listen to some of our early stories, ones you might have missed. I'd recommend How the Whale Got Its Sad Song, Ngwenya and the Crocodile, the fish and the star, and maybe the boy and the snow wolf. This week, we're giving you not one, but two fairy tales. This first one is from Norway. It's a twisted fairy tale about trolls, and it's told by Emily Hennessy. Do you know what trolls are? Yes, there's a troll in the Three Billy Goats Gruff story. They're huge and mean and a bit like ogres. And just like Baba Yaga, the Russian witch, they like eating people. So if you're not keen on scary stories, we've got another story for you, which we'll post at the same time. The Spinning Sisters, which is about a prince and a princess, and it has a happy fairy tale ending. And today, we've also got news about the winners of our picture competition, which we'll announce straight after this story. So, while we have a quick word with the grown-ups, could you have a think about how you would start a story if you were going to tell it? Hello, super great kids. Did you decide how you'd start your story? Maybe once upon a time, or back in the day when animals could talk, or crick, crack, or mouth open, story jump out. Oh, there are so many ways you could start your story. Well now, Emily Hennessy is about to tell us a scary fairy tale called Butterball. It's from Norway a country in the north of Europe which has mountains and fjords and stories about Vikings and, of course, trolls. This story is about a little boy and a seriously horrid troll. Ready? Mouth open. Story jump out. Once upon a time, in a little hut at the edge of the forest, lived a boy called Butterball. Now they called him Butterball because his skin was as smooth as butter and he was as round as a ball. One day, Butterball was at home with his mother stirring the soup and his little dog staring out of the window when all of a sudden (coughs) Butterball ran to the window to see what his little dog was barking at and Coming up the garden path, he saw something terrible. He saw something awful. Coming up the garden path was none other than the troll hag. Oh, the troll hag was awful. She was bony and hairy with big flapping feet and nails like claws and huge hairy ears, a long snaky tail, greedy beady eyes and a mouth full of razor sharp teeth. But that's not the worst bit. The worst bit about the troll hag is that she carries her head under her arm. The troll hag walked all the way up to the little hut and knocked on the door. And then, as Butterball watched in horror, she lifted up her head and... 
placed it back on her shoulders. Quick, said Butterball's mother. You must hide under the table, Butterball. And so Butterball ran and hid underneath the table, but the trouble was that Butterball was so big and round that the table wobbled on top of him. Butterball's mother opened the door. Ah, troll hag, she said. Oh, how lovely to see you. How can I help today? Well, said the troll hag, I wonder, is your boy at home, you know, the big round one? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, said Butterball's mother. I'm afraid he's out today chopping wood in the forest. Can I help? Oh, what a shame, troll hag pulled a big brown sack out of her pocket and said, looking around the room, seeing the wobbling table. It's just that I have a present for him that I thought he might like. Butterball heard his favourite word and out from the table he jumped. Beep, 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 beep. Here I am, here I am. Where's my present? Where's my present? <laughs> Well, if you want it, you'll have to climb into this sack to get it. <laughs> and before Butterball's mother could stop him, Butterball leapt straight into that big brown sack. And as soon as he was in, the troll hag pulled the sack up around him and tied a rope around the top. She flung it over her shoulder and off she ran. Butterball's little dog chased after. <laughs> But she booted him hard and the little dog flew up into the air and... Ah! The troll hag raced into the forest. All the way through those dark trees she ran. <laughs> but the bag was heavy. I'll just uh, stop for a little rest and catch my breath. And she put the bag down beneath the tree. And she sat herself down, she lifted her head off her shoulders under her arm, and it wasn't long before she was snoring away. Butterball reached up, opened up the top of the bag, ah, and climbed out. He picked up a big heavy branch, shoved it into the bag, tied the rope around the bag once again, and then made his way back home. And his mother and his little dog were so pleased to see him. When the troll hag woke up, she put her head back onto her shoulders, lifted up the bag. Oh, that's good. It doesn't feel quite so heavy now. Nothing like a little rest to make work a little easier. And off she continued through the forest to where the trees grow so close together you can't even see the sky above. She came to her little hut. Open the door. Troll daughter! Troll daughter! Are you here? I've got something lovely for dinner. It's going to be lovely, lovely butterball stew! <laughs> and down came the troll daughter. And together they filled up a huge cooking pot with water, placed it over the fire, waited for the water to bubble and boil, and then splash into the water came the branch. Water everywhere, and when the troll hag saw that Butterball had escaped, she was furious. The next day, Butterball was at home, with his mother stirring the soup, and his little dog gazing out of the window, when all of a sudden, a ruff, 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 ruff. sure enough, Coming up the garden path again, Butterball could see the troll hag. She put her head back onto her shoulders. She knocked on the door. Butterball ran and hid under the table. Butterball's mother opened the door. Ah, oh, how can I help you today? Ah, oh, is your son at home? No, I'm afraid he's uh, off by the well fetching water. Can I? Oh, what a shame, because in this bag I've got a lovely present for him. 
Butterball heard his favourite word and couldn't help himself. Out from the table he jumped and beep 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 beep. Here I am, here I am. Where's my present? Where's my present? Oh, well, if you want it, you'll have to climb into the bag to get it. And before Butterball's mother could stop him, he jumped into the bag. And before long, the troll hag had flung that bag over her shoulder and was running off down the garden path. Ruff, 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 ruff. the way into the forest. <laughs> but what a ball was so heavy. Oh, I'll just I'll just stop here for a little rest. And she put the bag down. I'll make sure I don't fall asleep this time. <laughs> and she took her head off her shoulders under her arm and she tried to stay awake. But she couldn't. And before long Butterball could hear her snoring and he climbed out from the bag picked up a great big rock, shoved it into the bag, tied the rope tight and went back home. And his mother and little dog were so pleased to see him. The troll hag woke up, head back on shoulders, lifted up the bag and oh, oh, it seems even heavier now than it was before. Oh, well, at least I know he's in there. <laughs> All the way back into the darkest part of the forest, into her little hut. Troll daughter, we're going to have butterball stew tonight. Oh, it's going to be lovely. She opened up the bag and saw the stone and she was furious. The next day, Butterball was at home with his mother stirring the soup, with his little dog at the window, when all of a sudden, <laughs> there she was again, head up onto her shoulders. She knocked on the door. Butterball hid under the table. Ah, oh, hello, said Butterball's mother. Uh, how can I help you? Is your son at home? No, I'm afraid he's uh, he's out gathering kindling in the forest today. Can I? Oh, what a shame, because in this bag I've got a lovely present. Butterball couldn't help himself. He heard his favourite word. He leapt out from under the table and beep, 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 beep. Here I am, here I am. Where's my present? Where's my present? Well, if you want it, you'll have to climb into the bag to get it. And into the bag he jumped before his mother could stop him and the troll hag was running down the garden path. Ruff, 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 ruff. Into the forest. <laughs> oh, the bag was heavy. Butterball was heavy. But today she would not be tricked. Today she did not stop. <laughs> all the way into the deepest, darkest part of the forest. All the way back to her house with Butterball still in the bag. Troll daughter, a troll daughter, I've got him this time. No trickery, no mischief. Tonight will be butter ball stew. <laughs> oh, but I'm exhausted. I tell you what, you take the bag, you make the stew. I am going for a lie down. And so the troll hag went upstairs to rest. And the troll daughter found herself with a great big heavy bag. So she took it over to the table and she undid the rope and out climbed Butterball. Well, said Butterball, where do you want me? Um, I, I, I'm not quite sure, said the troll daughter. You see, I'm, I've never made Butterball stew before. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to do it. Ah, said Butterball. Well, I'll tell you what. I know exactly how to do it, so why don't we just swap places? I'll make the stew and you just relax. And the troll daughter thought that was a good idea and so she agreed. But of course it wasn't long before bubbling away in the pot was not butterball stew, but troll daughter stew. The troll hag woke up from her rest and she started to come down the stairs. Quickly, a butterball ran over to the cupboard. And on the way, on the floor, he saw lying there was the branch and next to it, the big stone. So he picked up the stone and he went into the little kitchen cupboard and then he placed the stone up at the very top of the door. And there he hid. 
the troll hag came into the kitchen. No, oh, something smells delicious. <laughs> oh, look at this lovely stew bubbling away. <laughs> and she picked up a spoon and she had a little taste. Oh, lovely, lovely butterball stew. <laughs> and then from the kitchen cupboard came a voice that said, Mmm, lovely, lovely troll daughter stew. The troll hag put the spoon in again and had another taste. Mm, lovely, lovely butterball stew. And from the kitchen cupboard, a voice that said, Lovely, lovely troll daughter stew. The troll hag put the spoon down and marched over to that kitchen cupboard. She yanked open the door. And the great big stone that Butterball had placed on top of the door fell down woo, and hit the place where her head should have been. Dunk. But there was no head there, just shoulders. The head that was underneath the troll hag's arm began to laugh. <laughs> you trying to trick me now? Where are you? And she was flailing around when suddenly her feet caught the branch that was on the ground and she went flying. Her body landed with a thud on the ground and her head went wee and then hit the ground with such a loud crack that it split in Two. That was the end of the troll hag. Butterball stepped out of the cupboard. He stepped over the troll hag and then out of the troll's house. Through the forest he walked and then up his little garden path all the way back home. And his mother and his little dog were so pleased to see him again. And I'm pleased to tell you that Butterball and his mother and his little dog, they lived there in that little hut at the edge of the forest and were never, ever bothered by trolls again. Phew! Well now, I'm very pleased to hear it was a happy ending, at least for Butterball and his mum and his little dog. Give yourself a pat on the back for being brave and listening to that. And here's a fun fact. Did you know there's a caramel sweetie or candy in Norway which is named after that little boy Butterball? Amazing. Now, super great kids, it's time to announce who won the colouring books for our drawing competition. I have to say that it was extremely popular and we were really pleased that so many of you shared your pictures with us. But that means that it was very hard to choose only 10 winners since all your drawings were so good. Well, here are the names of the 10 people who won this time. I'm going to tell you them in no special order. They were all equally good. Winnie from Wisconsin, who drew an intricate picture of Biku Bai and the coconut. Tilly from Essex in the UK, who drew a kind of story map of the magical tree story. Olive from Auckland in New Zealand for her imaginative, colourful picture of the rainbow snake and the medicine man. Victor from the UK and living in Germany for his fun, well-observed picture of the three wishes. Maya from the UK, who drew a stylish, colourful picture of the lion, the vulture and the hyena. Matthew from Pittsburgh in the United States for his clever, well-observed picture of Nora and the Aki fruit. And Mariah from Rotorua in New Zealand, who's a very active follower, drew a lovely picture of the peddler of Swatham with his little dog standing next to his house and the old apple tree where they found the gold. Iliana in Montreal, Canada, who drew a fun and very well-observed picture of Biku Bai and the coconut. Great details, Ileana. Lucy, in Portland in the United States, who drew a celebratory picture of Tianjie and the yellow dress, which she mailed to us in London all the way from Oregon. 
and Ray, who painted a very creative picture of the monkey from How the Stars Became. Hey, your monkey really has attitude, Ray. It made me laugh. Thank you. Sorry if you didn't get one this time. We'll try to think of another competition. Thanks very much to all of you for taking part. Finding your pictures every day felt a bit like opening an advent calendar. You can see all the inspiring pictures that were sent in on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash stories. There are more individual thanks for your pictures after the Spinning Sisters story. A big thank you to all of our sponsors and subscribers. Thanks to Bella and Jack, Edie and Connie and Judith and Oak for your Kofi donations. Very kind. If you'd like to support Super Great Kids on Apple, click subscribe in Apple Podcasts. Or on Patreon or Ko-fi, go to our website and click on the buttons. Thank you all. We couldn't do this without your help. Teamwork makes the dream work, or as they say in West Africa, when spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. If you're interested in Super Great Kids t-shirts and other Super Great Kids goodies, go to our website, supergreatkidsstories.com and follow the links. That's it for now. Hope you liked that troll story. And don't forget, there are two stories this week. A bonus fairy tale called The Three Spinning Sisters, which is unusual in that it has happy endings all round. See you next week. Christmas Eve.